infamous Paula from Gardening with Puppies. And I'm here with Late Bloomer. Can you believe and it? And she's with Late Bloomer. And I came <laughs> all the way to Blue Mountain, Georgia to see this wonderful lady. And we're going to have a great time yes, in the next few hours. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most exciting things about having a garden channel is getting to meet in person my online garden friends. Today I'm with Paula from Gardening with Puppies in Blue Ridge, Georgia, and we're going to check out her new mountain garden paradise. <laughs> about uh, Paula, what do you miss about gardening in Florida? Well, anything? The the main thing is that I was able to garden all year long, and here, you right. know, it's just a, a short season, but uh, right. I absolutely love it here. So you have to get all of your planning done, like like everybody else that has a, a long winter. Right. Got to get everything, all your ducks in order, uh -huh. and and just run out and, and plant stuff. Yeah. But 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 you're you're new here. You've only been here three months. Well, we I right? came up here in September, and it was a little bit later before my hubby came up, but. Uh, Right. Yeah, and uh, it's been a lot of work. But you're going to see Paula has so many beautiful flowers, and all this work has been done in the last two months, right? Basically, yeah. Yeah. So um, flowers you can count on, but vegetables, you really don't have all of your vegetable space laid out yet, do you? No. I started out with a garden. I'll show you that in a little bit, but I started out with a garden down at the bottom of our property. But it just doesn't get enough sun, so I'm, right. I have other plans, and I'll tell you what those plans are. Yeah, the uh, very quickly. You have so many gorgeous trees. Do you know what kind of trees these are? Oh, got a lot of maples and oaks, and uh, so they're just leafing out. Yeah, they're just leafing out now. Yeah. Oh, they're towering. I would say that's fifty feet. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Sixty feet, maybe. Yeah. We've had some that were a hundred. <laughs> Now, if a lightning hits one of those uh -huh. and it goes, on we your... don't think about this. Things. Okay, you don't think, don't don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this big one right here mm -hmm. behind us. Yeah, that's oh. what I worry about all the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can't worry. We can't worry. No, no, no. So, uh, so you don't really miss gardening except for the season, the long season in Florida. Right. Gar uh, Paula loves to talk about soil. And uh, I think on some of her episodes, she's talked a lot about soil and how she built really uh, rich soil in Florida sand, which was kind of an anomaly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And um, here, what, what kind of soil do you have here? It's rock and clay. Oh, okay. So I have a bigger challenge here than I did in Florida, believe me. Wow. Well, yeah. you won't have a challenge. She, Paula works mostly with uh, wood chip, layering wood chips, uh -huh. right? Uh, shall we say the Back to Eden method? Or yes. Uh -huh. She's working with the Back to Eden no-till gardening method, which primarily uses wood chips, um, layered wood chips on top of your garden, which decompose and uh, provide a rich soil for your critters, your worms, and everything else. Mm -hmm. They do the work for you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to... <laughs> we don't want to be digging and back breaking, That's right. doing back break, That's breaking right. work, right? So, and never till. Yeah, and never till. Once you establish the wood chips, mm -hmm. you just keep layering it on, and you don't dig it up, and you don't turn it over. It's just it's just one gardening method, but it's one that I want. I am working on in my small late bloomer garden. And uh, well, why don't we uh, why don't we take a look at some of your beautiful flowers? Okay, I'd like to show them to you. <laughs> I see you've got some butterfly action on your flowers. Yeah, we have a lot of butterflies and bumblebees. Tell me about all this. Yeah, what I've been trying to do is bring in a lot of flowers this year. Yeah. And the reason, of course, that. is to attract the pollinators. Right. Oh, wow. 
Wow, so you're going to triple triple this space. Yes, and, and this area will be for vegetables and fruit. Ah, nice. Yeah. And so this front... will make a more attractive presentation, you know, to the cabin. So this, I'll... this is going to be your pollinator kind of row. Exactly. Flowers bring them in. Right. They get to work on the veggies. Yep. Good and I still have incorporated some vegetables in the area too. So. Well, that's what I like about it. It seems like it's mixed use. I've uh -huh. seen beets, tomatoes, and... peppers. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that that's already now you're going to bush this right because you didn't cut that sucker. Right, right. Uh -huh. I just have to go to work on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got a pepper. I have quite a few peppers in here. Wow. Yeah. I love. I wish I had. And the room purple for... cabbage over there. I think it's a beautiful presentation. Thank you. I did, really love it. Did you grow any of this from seed? Yes, a lot of it's from seed, and um, I planted a lot of tubers. Mm. But I just uh, sprinkled a lot of seed out here, and they're, they're coming up, a lot of the cosmos and uh, oh, hollyhocks. So, oh. and, you just, Delphinia. oh, you seeded the cosmos? Uh -huh. oh, and that'll come back next year, right? Yes. All right. And poppy, and so every, just about everything I have here is perennial. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really happy. Well, with let's it. take a walk around. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever see lawyers? Uh, they're not moving yet, but uh, these, I've planted them all. This is my shade guard. What are those yellow ones here? That's a, a double the go It's uh, mostly like parsley and lettuce, purple cabbage, and I have some broccoli in the back. But this is really a temporary bed cake, because so uh, we're going to be expanding this whole area, and we're going to be putting a pond here. A pond? Yeah. Wow. With the uh, water trickling down the mountain, I mean the, the little uh, cliff here. Then we're going to have garden area, and it'll have a border of rocks. That's why we have the, the rocks laying there. We're going to be bringing more up. Mm. And it will go all the way over to where you see the tulip bed. And that will be bordered with rocks. Oh, and wow. And we'll planting flowers and vegetables in there. Because this area gets a, a fair amount of sun. You were saying last night that you love having a smaller house. You have less housework exactly. uh, with your cabin. And you can spend more time gardening. Because that's what you love to do. That's right. Oh, Paula, your place is gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Kay. I'm so uh, glad you're able to come. I know. Can you believe it? I know. I, my philosophy is go out of your way. Because if you go out of your way to meet people that you've connected with, uh, the, it's so rewarding. It's worth the time and the effort to go out of your way. Because what an incredible place this is. Oh, thank you. And I feel like I've known you forever. I know. It's been like four years, right? You started about four years ago? I did. I started four years ago, uh, Earth Day 2012. Wow. <laughs> That's a good time to start. <laughs> and I just remember Paula in Florida was 
was growing this uh, giant pumpkin. What did you call it? It had a name. Um, Rocky. Rocky. Yeah. She had. He was an underdog. I forget why he was an underdog, but he was. He was. He, well, Rocky was huge, and, and the main reason is because her soil it was so great. But we got the seeds about the same time, and we were both going to try to grow a giant uh, pumpkin. Right. And I have. We were in a contest. We were in a contest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they told me that all I had to have was uh, 30 square feet. Well, that's my whole garden. So it was like I had. To, it was growing over the tomatoes, and I just said, "No, you know what." One pumpkin, I, I, I can't do it. I don't have the space. I know. The leaves alone are like know. this big. You know? I know, I know, I know. It was crazy. It was fun. But though. I remember she was putting, she recommended putting earthworm castings around uh -huh. that stem to protect yeah. the stem because, what does that protect the stem from? Uh, the earthworm castings? Yeah, is that for the beetles or just the I don't nutrition? Really, that, that was just for nutrition, yeah. Okay. I put okay. all kinds of things around that thing. Okay. The wood chips and uh, okay. horse manure and you name it, I put it there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. What can I say? That's right. That's right. Well, I really do love your show and I want to hear about how you got started and everything else. But the first question that I have to ask you is Did you kiss Sam Malone on Cheers? <laughs> <laughs> No. Aww. I'm so sorry. I wanted to. <laughs> Believe me, I wanted to. And, and when I worked on Becker, we're talking about Ted Danson when I worked right. on Cheers. And uh, then I worked on Becker a few years later, and uh, I was in a scene with Ted again. And I was a postal clerk, and this was right after people were kind of going postal. I don't know uh, if anybody remembers that. I remember that, that yeah. So the joke on Becker was he was... He had to walk through this huge maze to get to me, and there was no one waiting in line. But he had to walk through the maze anyway, and he gets up to me, and I was very sexy postal clerk. This is going back a few years. And, uh, You're still sexy. <laughs> and he said, uh, I, ha I said, uh, here's your postage and an, a change of address card. And, I, and he said, I haven't moved. And I said, I have. <laughs> and that was the joke. So. Oh, cute. Oh, he said, he said, are you going postal on me or something like that? It was a, it was a cute sketch, but anyway. Uh, well, now, how did you get started in gardening? You say you're a late bloomer. Right. Well, if anybody's watched my show, it, it's all explained in episode one. Uh, I had a parkway tree that died. And uh, I met a biodynamic farmer about the same time and uh, at the Waldorf School, actually, and um, he said, from now on, you're only growing edibles. And it was just like, okay, okay. I'll, that's what I'll do. <laughs> Sounds good to me. He said, plant a few uh, citrus trees and surround them with nasturtium and herbs. And once I did that, I was completely hooked. You were hooked, yeah. And I never looked back. Good I just for you. jumped in the deep end. Good for you, girl. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can start in gardening. I've been gardening since I was a teenager. Like my, I was about 18, 19 years old. My, I, my father gardened, my mother gardened, and my grandfather who lived with us. So In what state? Uh, New Jersey. Oh, that's right. Where we have New, really good soil. New, New Jersey best tomatoes in the world. Okay, I beg to differ, but all right, I'll <laughs> let you have that one. <laughs> well, I feel like I've known Paula all my life. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I got here yesterday and it was just like, oh yeah, I just saw you last week online. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Well, I, some people you connect with more than others on the internet. That's and true. We really connected. She follows Late Bloomer. I follow her and... Uh, Love her channel. Yeah, Late Bloomer. Gardening with puppies. <laughs> Check them both out. Support us. Give Please. us a thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye from... Blue Ridge, Georgia. Georgia. Huh. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye, puppies. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. On the road again. so ready for this interview. I, uh, Paula, tell me, um, what do you miss about Florida? Nothing. 
<laughs> Let me start again. Uh,